Okay, Addis Maximus here. This time, just a little basic video about the Ryobi TC401. I did pick this up at a garage sale for good and cheap. $100 at the Home Depot, so I guess this is the more current model. This one has a lot more crud of sitting around construction projects rather than having a ton of use. There's really pretty much just a, not very much scuffing on the base plate here. Wet dry tile saws. This happens to be a four inch, but it does turn out that there is just enough clearance to actually put a four and a half inch blade. It uses a standard five eighths arbor, and there's with like a millimeter of clearance, you can still you can put on a four and a half inch blade. And the reason you would want to do that is many times countertops are actually thirty millimeters and one and a quarter inches thick. And you need just a little bit more depth of cut than what the 4-inch blade would offer, just in those certain situations. Wide variety of blades. This one happened to have just a basic home, <laughs> obviously Home Depot, Ryobi with the rigid blade. They're all wet dry, so this had a little, a little water system, a little plastic fork that just dribbled water on both sides of the blade. Many, depending on the blade, you can get a variety of blades, some like turbo rim blades and that type of stuff. And specialty patterns can work real well dry, but apparently when you're cutting glass, which isn't super common, but it's this is one of the saws you would actually use to cut larger pieces of glass. The glass slurry can build up and you really do want a, a wet system or a real specialty glass blade. And that's the one thing I've heard is that if you're just using standard norm, uh, blades with glass and you really want the, lubric or the water system. But, once again, they can run dry. What's interesting about this Ryobi is I actually have a DeWalt, but this one's 12 amps at 13,700 RPM. Since there isn't much of a tooth, much of a bite on these blades, they tend to spin really fast. But 12 amps is actually a lot of power. That is a lot of power for a little tile saw. Even my DeWalt is 10.8 amps at 13,000 RPM. So there's actually quite a few videos. A lot of people buy this and when, you know, a lot of these lime green Ryobi tools are not super great. But when it comes to something like a tile saw is such a rudimentary power tool that it's actually kind of hard to screw up as long as you use ball bearings. I guess the worst thing I've noticed on this one is there just seems to be a little bit of end play. You can just see the blade move it's a tiny amount maybe half a millimeter or 20 30 thousandths of an inch not a big deal at all particularly because due to the nature of a continuous rim blade it really does tend to want to stay right exactly where it's cutting when you're using trim saws or any kind of saw with a two wood cutting with a tooth blade this end play can become a lot more of an issue because if the blade moves just a little bit back and forth with the tooth blade, you can make a cut and then maybe just put a little bit of a different amount, different direction of force on it and cause the blade to shift. And then as the next tooth comes around, you'll kind of get this uneven surface. That type of issue is much less apparent on, once again, saws like this. So I won't fault them too much, but we'll see if we can't fix that up. They've been making this for a long time. They even have a cordless version now. I guess several manufacturers do. This was their modified version. I think the older one was better quality because it had a big metal lever for adjusting the depth rather than a plastic, you know, cap. These don't really have increments or anything like that. One thing that is interesting is that the shoe will go down far enough to where even if you had a four and a half inch blade, it would still sit up without risking any kind of dings or damage to the blade. Since they are continuous rim and are never supposed to have a tooth blade on them, these don't have guards. Plus, they would just get all clogged up anyway. I'll have to say these adjustments aren't great, but they're just fine. The thing runs pretty good. The one other thing I should mention is because there is no guard, um, We've actually run into a few of these over the years. Uh, they For the professional brands, they're pretty expensive. Like the wall, I think, is $160 or something. So I haven't picked them up. But what I have noticed is it's just super easy with these saws because of the way they have no guard. 
that the way they get banged around inevitably the blade gets a little bit bent and you just have to be aware of that and use a piece of uh, a pair of pliers to straighten it out otherwise once again it runs pretty good These are pretty safe to use around water. Not only do they have a GFCI, a ground fault circuit interrupter, so that's if there's a current flowing from the hot wire, not the neutral, the hot wire to ground, then it'll shut itself off. But it's also a double insulated tool being all plastic, except for the metal front housing here. They did make the back flat, as you can see, so at least they're wise enough to make it pretty easy to change the blades rubber boots over the trigger and this is not a lock out this is an actual trigger lock which I appreciate instead of having a lock out it's just a normal trigger lock to make it easier to deal with left hand blade so it's more optimized for right handed people doesn't actually have a spindle lock you're literally supposed to use it this way since it's a left hand blade uh, it's gonna have a left hand thread so this bolt unscrews in the wrong direction as you can see I'm turning it clockwise to get it out so it's a left hand thread bolt for a left hand blade it's keyed so the power is delivered through the shaft into this outer washer and then the pressure of this outer washer the friction just like so many other saws uh, is how it drives itself and I already took this blade off once but this is what I mean by you can see inside here there just isn't a lot of build up um, once again, you know, uh, since this is the cheaper option, a lot of people buy these and then they just use them for one project and that's all they need them for. But when it comes to a, a tool like this, it's just a universal AC motor, a switch, you know, one set of gears. It's really simple. So, you know, buying the really more, something like a cordless drill, which has a huge amount of complexity or a rotary hammer that type of stuff it makes a difference buying the more professional and higher quality brands because they're such uh, complicated tools where it's a simple tool it's a real diminishing returns <clears throat> a dewalt or a milwaukee tile saw that's just a motor with a single gear reduction and four bearings and a ryobi one so this is a situation where since it's a tool that gets dirty gets scraped up um why not buy the Ryobi, to tell you the truth? I haven't really read that people have had a lot of issues with these having any kind of, you know, inherent lifespan issues or anything like that. Those screws weren't particularly tight. We're going to take a quick look at the front of the gears here and see if... I'm suspecting part of the end play is the fact that there's a ball bearing up front, but there's going to be a needle bearing in the back. Oh, and that just pops. No, it is... I didn't know that. So this is a secondary washer. That's actually not a bad deal right there. This washer is actually inset. And so what it's doing is it's providing a convolution to prevent uh, grit from getting at this bearing right here. Because, of course, grit would have to go down through the convolution and then back up. And since most of the grit, the source of it is when you're running it, that's constantly spinning, driving it back out again. And as we can see, it's actually pretty effective. Although this isn't the world's most heavily used saw. Well, the bearing feels perfectly smooth, so that's just a uh, ball bearing. Surprisingly enough, there'll be just a little bit of side play. They are indeed using a ball bearing in the back, so I'm just kind of surprised they didn't use like a wave washer or something to take up that slack. One thing we will see, one, the gear teeth are great, but this is pretty wide. If we take my thumb here, we can see that that's probably a 12, I mean, here's a 10 millimeter socket, and it's wider than that. Whoop. So it's probably a 12 millimeter or half inch wide gear. And this is interesting. We can see actually a pretty chunky motor arbor right there. A lot of diameter. One of it... One reason is, of course, it's not geared down very much. It, the blade runs at 13,700 RPM. But on a saw, a saw is particularly like this, even versus wood cutting, when you're uh, masonry cutting saws, tile saws, 
it's a constant load for sometimes you're cutting small tile, sometimes you're cutting large tile, or once again, things like countertops and stuff. Those are long, continuous cuts, and those put a whole lot more stress and wear on gears. And it's obvious that Riley's learned from that because for a simple tool, those are actually some pretty large gears. Plenty of grease in there, surprisingly enough. Disassemble by popping this sir clip off. We can see the evidence of the keyway for this bull gear here. So you pop that sir clip off. It probably still has a degree of press fit, and you press it all out this way. I was having trouble kind of figuring out why this seemed odd because the bearing seemed a little too flush. It isn't that it's too flush, but they actually have a separate seal, a shaft seal right at the edge here. And then the ball bearing is going to be down just a little bit further, really trying to prevent dust intrusion. Um, so it shows experience and even a gasket. Magically, in my little collection of washers, I had exactly what I was looking for, which is a hair thin... While this is, it's so small it doesn't really look like a wave, but a wave is a washer that's been upset so it kind of has a spring action. And this is all needed. Just one of these hair thin wave washers just to maintain just a tiny amount of tension on those, the back of this gear so it doesn't have any of that end play. And that will actually help the gears last a little bit longer. The pitch angle is what really affects gear life, not whether or not this is moving in and out a little bit. But it will just make it cut a little bit more accurately. What it will help is, surprisingly enough, having that little bit of end play will allow the bearings to wear out just a little bit quicker just because the rolling position is slightly changing. So this maintains a constant, quote-unquote, rolling position and will actually help with that. I'm not a very good engineer, but I know that enough tools that actually have preloaded bearings like warm, dry saws and stuff, that it's a good idea. And I'm just surprised why we never did it. And this will be perfect. The one thing to mention about wave washers is we can see that there's a boat outside, a convex and a concave side. You want this little lobe side pointing towards the ball bearing that's in there. So we're going to put it on like, th like that. If we have it flipped around the other way, then sometimes these raised edges on, come on camera, sometimes those raised edges can actually rub on the shield of the bearing. So you always put those towards the quote unquote fixed object. And that is, <laughs> I don't know where I got it from, but obviously some kind of overseas made tool because that is the exact size washer. They even put a little flat on one side just to give it that extra bit of clearance. Got that bat together. That's all they needed. I don't know why they didn't put that in from the factory. Uh, probably because they just determined, oh, it was just unnecessary. But it sure is nice to do something like this. And now the saw has a, just a perfectly tight spindle. But still turns really easily. I guess we'll take a quick look at this motor since it is a big old, I mean, 12 amps is big for a Ryobi. They're not going to have very many tools. Um, besides like some other miter saws, they're going to have motors like this. Which is surprising. I mean, it really is pretty high performance for a um, make sure this one really, I mean, we can see that the brushes are still pretty long. But yeah, it's pretty high performance. It's kind of weird. It's like Ryobi decided that you know, if they're going to make a tool, I mean, the sad thing about Ryobi is they're a Japanese uh, power tool brand, and they really were trying to break into the market just like Makita. Um, had a lot of really high quality products, and then moved some production over to the United States and made or built a lot of tools for a long time in the United States, and then end up becoming the house brand for Home Depot, which is always disappointing. You can see this has been used with water and some of that mist has managed to make it down into the brushes and the only co real corrodible part well the bra or the uh, pfft, copper is a little bit but we can see a little bit of rust on the spring that's just the nature of the beast something else that's surprising is we can see that those aren't stamped sheet metal those are broached billet uh, brush guides which is something to, uh, something to be said for that Always check the screws periodically on all your power tools. 
uh, to tell you the truth. Especially things that encounter more vibration, like saws, reciprocating saws, circular saws, impacts, that type of stuff. Something to be said about the, all the old cast metal, all metal housings is the fact that they tend to keep screws tight. Where when you have plastic, over time the plastic has known as creep. It starts to get smooshed a little bit under the head of the screw. And then the screw loses its tightness. So you periodically have to just go and double check. All three of these screws were definitely not tight enough. And they're even trying to mitigate that by having these extra wide washers that they put on them. That was pretty easy to pop out. So I started learning. So a lot of, it seems, one, it kind of depends on the tool. But two, it seems to be, eh, maybe since the 2000s, there started being the, uh, more common these little rubber kind of grommets. To go around these back bearings, we can see that Ryobi properly did a um, rubber sealed. But these back bearings are the most likely to actually seize and lock up because they don't have the advantage of having a little bit of a grease reservoir and the working end of the gearbox end of the tool. Uh, this one's still great. It is a 608, so the world's the most common size skateboard wheel bearing or roller blade, if you like. So these little rubber grommets they started adding. So they actually provide two purposes. Two, one, it's a little rubber grommet, so it reduces a little bit of vibra micro vibrations that are in the motor, which I will say has just some really shallow grinding here and here. Otherwise, actually, it's a pretty well-built motor. But nonetheless, when those bearings fail, they tend to lock up. And then when they spin, after they lock up, they just melt down the housing and ruins the whole power tool, basically, because people aren't going to replace the housing. So you start doing this thing. So when the bearing locks up, it kind of destroys this rubber grommet. And you pull out the bearing and the rubber grommet. And you replace the grommet and bearing. And it prevents damage to the housing. We can see how little the hours are. This commutator is in great condition. They did put pinched. It is pinched windings. But they did at least put a little bit of epoxy there. For a grinding tool or a tool that works with the braces... I would have thought they'd put just a little bit heavier of a varnish coating on these windings. I'm feeling something right there. The reason being is over long periods of time, the dust from cutting tile, particularly if you run this dry, that dust basically starts sandblasting the actual windings themselves. I've seen in well-used like rotary hammers and stuff where it's nothing got caught in there. It's just some of these wires that are sitting up high are going to be more, more in the airflow and they just start that powdered ceramic tile just over time slowly starts abrading the windings but nonetheless i'm sure this will last quite a few cuts to tell you the truth i mean there's just not a lot to criticize about this tool desocketed the motor there so use a solid fan here's the fan shroud that helps pr provide some protection for the bearing here but it doesn't need a ton. Feels great. Rubber sealed once again. And then we can see this bowl gear is actually so large. Well, that one's actually not even press fit. It's just entirely relying on the little key and a tight little snap ring. But they put on just this big old bowl gear. Really as wisdom. They could have just used a tiny motor shaft and made the driven gear smaller to give it the same ratio but having them larger like this and a tool like this saw really will help with the longevity and there we have it for the Ryobi TC401 to tell you the truth uh, I think even Ryobi offers a three-year warranty now on their corded power tools for a hundred bucks it's a pretty worthy saw and actually quite a bit of airflow actually we've got uh, yeah. buying like an MK or something like that is increasingly difficult to justify considering how well built this Ryobi really is and the fact that it has a quite frankly unbelievable 12 amp motor well the DeWalt and the MK are about the same price $200 nearly twice the money but we have a ton of ventilation up through the front here even some through the top up to the front and a whole bunch on the the bottom here really moves a lot of air to try to prevent that motor from having any kind of overheating issues. 
And besides that, not a whole lot else to say. Once again, the DeWalt's and stuff, Makita's will be, are going to be higher quality, but once again, diminishing returns here. Billet brass brush guides, 12 amp motor, all rubber sealed, all entirely ball bearing construction with, you know, something that you do expect from the uh, Ryobi, which is this little bit of spindle end play, which was easily taken care of by, you know, I was able to easily take care of it because it, I had various little waves, super thin wave washers, right? We should have included that from the factory. But uh, other than that, I mean, the all metal housing, helical, oversized helical cut gears, extra double, extra sealing or uh, and a dedicated shaft seal for the front of the motor with that washer that's designed as a convolution. I mean, I mean, you got to call a spade a spade sometimes, and I think for a hundred dollars, unless you're actually a pro professional tile setter or something like that, if you're just doing some some projects or want to cut countertops, countertops and stuff like that, this is a way to go. And they sell as a four inch, but since it'll take a f most tile saws seem to be this odd four and three eighths inch, but since this housing will take you know up to a four and a half, you can use the four inch four and three eighths or even four and a half inch blades because they have the standard five eighths arbor which is nice anyway i'm actually kind of stoked i only paid 10 bucks for this thing and it turns out it was a pretty good deal see you next time see even tiny approves of this saw yep she's still around i should make more or include her more in videos she just woke up she's a little uh lethargic.